Hey, it's Hey Hey Paula. How you doing? I've just um, spent the last few hours cooking Chiquita. Beautiful, beautiful food. And here it is. Huge pot. Big pot. I'll be filling up these containers. I probably will have to go and buy more. A container like this will be I'll use a third a day and it will be mixed with see I've only got four left in the freezer one two three four I use a little bit of chicken breast um, the only commercial stuff I use is this I know use about an inch I make her breakfast at night and here it is. Consists of this, not that much. Some giblets, you know, some chicken hearts, uh, a little bit of chicken breast, and a little bit of that commercial stuff, about an inch. Gets that at nine o'clock in the morning, and then that's it. And today she's fed. Anyway, I want to go through her this dish with you. I'm going to plug my phone in because it's been crapping out every time I'm doing a video. Come on, Chiquita, come sit with me now. I go and buy a kilo's worth of um, pet mints. You can either buy uh, kangaroo meat, which is quite rich. Um, pet mints, the beef, um, or the, what's it called, the starts of an owl. You know, the baby cow one. I can't remember. So anyway, this is what I do for Chiquita. Um, I buy a kilo of the beef, which is about five or six dollars from this place in Seaford. Um, I put it in a huge pot, and I, you know, cook it around, cook it around, cook it around. Okay, and I add in a 250 gram bag of brown rice, or you can cook your own brown rice. I put in a can of kidney beans, wash them, can of chickpeas, wash them. Um, I used this time a Instead of um, frozen peas, I used a can of green peas. Um, I used frozen beans and frozen corn this time. I boiled it, drained it, put that in. Um, I grate two carrots, two red apples, two green apples, one large sweet potato. And I grate that all up. <clears throat> put it aside I wash and chop up some cauliflower broccoli some silver beet broccolini if you wish or broccoli um, and this time I've used celery for the first time um, I cut that up and I, I, I used to put it in the a neutral bullet and it just turned to liquid and then of course when I was cooking everything up it, the pot was just full of liquid and so I drain liquid off so I'm draining off all the goodness so what I did was with the cauliflower the broccoli the silver beet and the celery I cut it into big chunks and I boiled it and then drain the water out keep the water because you keep the water and you can drink it you know like when you boil vegetables 
keep the water. I don't salt the vegetables. I just um, keep the veggie water and my flatmate drinks it. That's where all the goodness is. <laughs> um, yeah, so I boiled that up, mashed it, put that in. Um, with the grated carrot, the apple and the sweet potato, I put it aside. I put that in at, at the end. So it's not fully cooked, it's sort of raw-ish, you know, and I use, excuse me, I use green apple and red apple, you know, for the, the tartness of the green apple, sweetness of the red apple, and I, and I uh, like I said, I peel them first, because when I try to grate them by hand, I, I've got problems with this hand, um, I had carpal tunnel, I had a cyst grind in it, it's, pretty weak and the other hand's got a metal plate in it from when I fell off a motorbike when I was showing off when I was 14 um, so yeah and yeah so I pulled that chucked it in and then I get some spinach you know a bag of spinach this is different than silver beets silver beets you know you can get the reed stemmed quite a harsh I mean a fibrous stem with the big green leaf, that's silver beet. Don't know what it's called in America. You probably call it spinach too, but I'm I'm talking about a packet of like little baby spinach leaves. You can just eat them. You can put them in a sandwich and eat them. Um, anyway, I get some of that spinach and I just grab it out of the bag and I just roughly chop it and I throw that in and that just cooks down with the heat of the meat. Uh, and I've told you about the kidney beans and the chickpeas. Look, I, I put lentils and butter beans in, but I don't have a big witch's pot. Even though I look like a witch, I don't have a witch's pot. <laughs> right. Yeah, so I took, oh, and two cans of sardines, just the 75 cent sardines. I just drain the oil off. Chuck the sardines in with the meat, mix it all through. I throw in, crack in two raw eggs, mix that through. Just read my list here. Um, okay, so at the end, and that's all cooked up nicely. I've put in the grated carrot and the apple and the sweet potato, which in New Zealand we call kumara, sweet potato is called kumara. Um, put that in at the end and mix it all through. <laughs> Man, you need a big pot. I need a witch's cauldron. Okay, so I actually do taste this. I do do a taste test. I flavor it, you know, because, you know, she's she's my baby. She wants to eat something nice that's tasty. So I put some, um, you know, low salt uh, chicken or beef stock in, you know, a couple of teaspoons to taste. And I actually get some honey and I drizzle a bit of honey in for a bit of sweetness, even though it's got the apple and that in it. And um, just cook it, cook it, cook it. Now I'm letting it cool. Um, and... Then I will put them into those little containers and put the lids on and then put them in the freezer. Yeah. And the lady at Chihuahua Rescue taught me this recipe and I've added to it and stuff like that. So it's, you know, you, you, you love your dog and so you can't just, like, she... Um, doesn't give them the commercial stuff. Um, I've heard that stuff that you, pet food that you get from China this can sometimes be made with cat and dog as the meat ingredient. I mean, come on, yuck. Um, when I had cancer and I could barely look after myself and I could barely eat Oh my God, before my bowel surgery, I was living on cigarettes and magnum, white magnum ice creams. Anyway, my point is, 
when it came time when Chiquita's food stocks were getting low in the freezer I'd almost be like panicking like oh my god I've got to buy all the ingredients and I've got to cook this up like I used to be a great cook I was cooking for everyone filling the freezers beef stroganoff doing lasagnas oh my god chili con carne which you can do chili con carne pie you can um have your chili chili con carne with a side of rice or um you can have it on top of spaghetti as a spaghetti bolognese oh my god what else could you do you use it as a the, the filling for a lasagna you make your own cheese sauce Man, now I've got no one to cook for, you know. I cook for my flatmate. I, I, I used to cook for him all the time and had the freezer full of food. And then cancer just stole my fucking whole life away from me. Took away everything. Every Everything that I enjoyed, all my energy, it all went. Now it's all coming back. I, I It's like, I want to live, I want to live. And it's just like, yeah, but you can't. You've got to stay home. You know, you can't go to the gym. You can't go. Well, I'm going to find out if I can. I've heard they're looking for volunteers at hospital. I have to be around people. I'm going crazy. I need to be around people. I'm sure there's people that look at me and go, oh, I'd love your life. You know, you just live and be with your dog and no, no one to look after and all that. But it's lonely. It's really lonely. I wish I had someone, I, I wish I had people, lots of people to cook for, you know, it's why I show my love, you know, cooking something nice, and with my friend Mishy, before she moved back to Atlanta, Georgia, I cook for her four kids, I do lasagnas, and I made, I used to make these beautiful corn fritters, I call them, and she said, oh, my God, they're called corn cakes in the States. Oh, my God, she'd be eating them, closing her eyes, like, it took her back to when she was back in America eating these corn cakes. Um, and veggie fritters. I invented these years ago, and there's, I was going out with this guy years ago, would not eat vegetables, but he ate my veggie fritters. It had every vegetable you could imagine in it, onion, garlic, silver beet pump grated pumpkin grated carrot um blah, sweet potato jeez oh, you know wh whatever i i chuck it in there big job grating i i'm gonna find myself something where you can go zzz and it grates it and then you mix it all up in a nice you know batter and oh my god and you fry them in olive oil and then you squeeze lemon juice all over them and you put a bit of salt. Oh my God, it's just, I just want you to eat my food, everybody. Anyway, we're talking about Chiquita, we're talking about dogs here. Now this is the best, um, best thing for them, for the little ones. But yeah, and I told you about the brown rice, yeah. Yeah, so, um, look. Garlic and onions, mushrooms, highly toxic. I've actually got, I went to a vet and I took a photo on the wall. It had everything that's toxic to a dog. I took a photo of it. It's in my phone. And I, when I meet someone with a dog, I, you know, get their number and I send it to them. Um, I had a Rottweiler years ago and I gave her my leftover mushrooms and onion thing that I made. And then we went for a ride in my Valiant Charger and I had to keep stopping because she kept vomiting and vomiting. I took her to the vet and I and he gave her an injection to stop her being sick. And I told her told him what I got, gave her the onions and the mushrooms. He said that's highly toxic. Oh my god! But I know some people. These people in Perth, they they their dogs, these Alsatians or whatever they were, they were like a million years old and they ate everything. He'd do the hottest chilies and. And the dogs would eat it. It's like, oh my god, I don't know. And and my dog Georgie, once she found a bar of chocolate, my mum took her for a walk. And Georgie was like, Aah. she and she ate this whole big bar of chocolate. She still was okay, <laughs> Georgie. Georgie, Georgie. Anyway, that that's my um, recipe for you guys to cook for your schnoglets. Um. 
I gave Chi a sample just before because she knew that I cooked it for her. So I got a little bowl and I put some down for it and she just was going... <coughs> polished it off and she looked up at me and I'm like, okay, one more spoon. Gave her a little spoon. She's like... <coughs> And there's a little bit of spinach or silver bit on the side and she's like trying to get at it I, I actually filmed it and my and my phone just stopped so that's why I quickly run in here and bloody plug that mofo in I wanted to show you show you guys like how much she enjoyed it so yeah oh my whole point was when I had cats it was like how the hell am I gonna cook this food for her what a what a big job and it would take me you know a couple of hours i mean if there's two of you someone would be grating someone would be chopping but it's only me so um when there's two of you or whatever it would be much easier and quicker but there was just it's just one of me and um but anyway um i enjoyed it today i i was bored and depressed and um i started doing it at 11 o'clock just you know, a bit of chopping, a bit of grating, and then I just full on did it. I thought I'd do a bit of prep and do it tomorrow, but I've done it. And I'm so happy, but I haven't got enough containers. So I have to go to the supermarket. Yeah. Yeah, and I threw away all my lollipops. I think I did that in a video. I told you in a video last night that I, me and Chi went to the car to sit there and listen to music. I had a smoke and I opened up the glove box. What's in there? Huh? Lollipops. Ah, I filmed that too. And that fucked out too. Anyway. Okay, guys. So uh, like and subscribe and um, perhaps share this. This um, If you've got chihuahuas, chihuahuas or any dog really. Um, share this recipe around for our, you know, when I pick up her poos in the backyard, it's got corn in it, that's really good, because it doesn't digest, so it scrapes you all out, yeah, this reminded me of my PET scan and my bowel cancer, so yuck, I don't know, my moods go like this, <laughs> I feel cold, it feels cold, it's a, it's a cold day, I feel yuck, anyway, I, I'm not going to start whinging again, anyway, lovely recipe, hey, hey, Paula, subscribe, and Chiquita, please, please to say, please to be saying, hello to please to be saying, hello, uh, please, please like and subscribe to mum and me, please, I can feel a little heart beating. You're, you're all warm and full now from your lovely food that mummy cooked for you with love. And when she's out in the sun, you should see her coat. It just shines. And when I took Chiquita to uh, my niece's place, yeah, well, she's all tired because she's eaten. You know, love you. Love you so much. Love you. Um, They just, they were saying, she's so beautiful. She's so beautiful. She's so beautiful. She's got these markings. And it makes it look like she's got a smile on her face. It's just her, her markings. Like, see there? It looks like she's smiling because of her markings. <laughs> They're beautiful. See, the, look at her little, little, little eyebrows. <laughs> You're like a little minutes of Doberman. All right, guys. Take care. Bye.